So today we're reading about amazing women. First, we're reading Baby Feminists, because it's cute. Before she rose to the Supreme Court, Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg was a baby. Before she flew to the stars, Dr. Mae Jemison was a baby. Before she painted her story in vibrant colors, Frida Kahlo was a baby. Before they led a movement, Gloria Steinem and Dorothy Pittman Hughes were babies. Before she awed the world with her racket, Billie Jean King was, there it is, a baby. Before they championed for women and girls around the world, Michelle and Barack Obama were babies. Before she imagined peace, Yoko Ono was a baby. Before she spoke for all to hear, Malala Yousafzai Yos was a baby. All of these babies grew up to be feminists. Every one of them has fought for equality for women and men. And baby, so can you. This one is called The Librarian of Basra, a true story from Iraq. Aliyah Mohammed Baker is the librarian of Basra, a port city in the sand-swept country of Iraq. Her library is a meeting place for all who love books. They discuss matters of the world and matters of the spirit. Until now. Now they only talk of war. Will planes with bombs fill the sky? Will bombs fall here? Will soldiers with guns fill the streets? Who among us will die? Will our families survive? What can we do? Aaliyah worries that the fires of war will destroy the books, which are more precious to her than mountains of gold. The books are in every language, new books, ancient books, even a biography of Muhammad that is 700 years old. She asks the government for permission to move them to a safe place, or the governor to move, for permission to move them to a safe place. He refuses. So Aaliyah takes matters into her own hands. Secretly, she brings books home every night, filling her car late after work. The whispers of war grow louder. Government officers offices are moved into the library. Soldiers with guns wait on the roof. Aaliyah waits and fears the worst. Then rumors become reality. War reaches Basra. The city is lit with a firestorm of bombs and gunfire. Aliyah watches as library workers, government workers, and soldiers abandon the library. Only Aaliyah is left to protect the books. She calls over the library wall to her friend, Anis Muhammad, who owns a restaurant on the other side. Can you help me save the books? 
I can use these curtains to wrap them. Here are crates for my shop. Can you use these sacks? The books must be saved. All through the night, Aaliyah, Annas, his brothers and shopkeepers and neighbors take the books from the library shelves, pass them over the seven foot wall and hide them in Annas's restaurant. The books stay hidden as the war rages on. Then nine days later, a fire burns the library to the ground. The next day, soldiers come to Annis's restaurant. Why do you have a gun? They ask. To protect my business, Annis replies. The soldiers leave without searching inside. They do not know that the whole of the library is in my restaurant, thinks Annis. At last, the beast of war moves on. Aaliyah knows that if the books are to be safe, they must be moved again while the city is quiet. So she hires a truck to bring all 30,000 books to her house and to the houses of friends. In Aaliyah's house, books are everywhere, filling floors and cupboards and windows leaving barely enough room for anything else. Aaliyah waits. She waits for war to end. She waits and dreams of peace. She waits and dreams of a new library. But until then, the books are safe. Safe with the Librarian of Basra. The last book that I have today comes with an awesome announcement. So, Children of Curiosity has a Etsy page, Etsy shop, and we're selling things that um, anybody in the community can donate and um, provide to help fund the school that we're starting. And I, I've been calling it Children of Curiosity, but it's the Ortiz Mountain Community School Co-op is kind of more official name. Um, and so that money is going to buying materials for the school. And we have enough now that we're kind of starting to think about what we're going to be putting that money into. And the first thing ooh, is these books. And they're going to be housed at the Ortiz Mountain Community Library. And they're all a kid's book about tough subjects. Subjects that are sometimes hard to talk about. Ugh, there's the rest of them. So we got a bunch of them. And we haven't checked them all in and got them all set up in the library, but they're here. We're starting to look through them and see what they're about. So this is a kid's book about feminism. Intro. When you hear a little boy say, boys are better than girls, it's more than just a frivolous statement. We are so conditioned to sexism that we sometimes forget it exists at all or act like it's harmless. It's not. So how do we change this? Believe it or not, feminism is the answer. I know, the F word can sound really intimidating, but this, word, this book is on a mission to make feminism not only accessible to every girl and boy, but also something they aspire to embrace. Buckle up, and hopefully by the end of this book, you'll call yourself a feminist, too. Hi, my name is Emma. I'm from Belfast, a city on the top part of Ireland. I'm a CEO. I'm a woman. A CEO is the big boss head of a company. And I'm a feminist. Feminism is super cool. And guess what? You could be a feminist too. And if you choose to be one, you can change the world. Some people think feminism is scary. Some th people think only women can be feminists. Some people think feminists don't like boys. 
But that's not true. Feminism is the belief that everyone is equal no matter what their gender is. Yay. Simple enough. One. Feminists believe everybody should be treated the same way. Two. Feminists believe that just because you're a girl doesn't mean you're less valuable. Three. Feminists believe everybody should have the same opportunities. Four. Feminists want the world to be a better place for everyone. Do you agree? Yeah. Sometimes people treat girls differently, right? Some people think girls can't do math, aren't good at science, should be skinny, always look pretty, can't be doctors, have to get married, or should make less money. Some people think boys are better, stronger, smarter, faster, more capable. But that's nonsense. Bonkers. Bananas. <laughs> Let me tell you the truth. Everywhere. Girls can win the World Cup. Just ask Megan Rapinoe. Girls can run big companies like Pepsi. Ever heard of it? Girls can win Nobel Prizes like Malala at 17 years old. Girls can be president like in Brazil and Ireland. It's super important you're a feminist, too. Even if you're not a girl. Because there are so many things that have to change. Like, when you hear someone say, only boys can, that's not for girls. Girls can't. Boys are better at. Remember, that's not true and tell them that you know a girl who won the Nobel Prize. And ladies, be yourself, accept yourself, love yourself, appreciate yourself. Because we think you're awesome. I'm a feminist and I wanna fight for all women, no matter what their skin color is, which country they're from, who they choose to love, what body parts they have, how much money they make, or what they choose to wear. I don't care. care anything. Because when we fight for everyone and give them the same opportunities, the world gets better for all of us. All right, that was pretty intense, huh? Good, because treating everyone equally is a pretty intense matter. Everyone is equal, so everyone should be treated equally. And if you believe that, guess what? You're a feminist. I'd like to be the first to welcome you and that kiddo with you to the club. You are a part of a movement that's made up of fellow rascals, rule breakers, think out of the boxers, and world changers. The only criteria for belonging? Believe that everyone should be treated equally. Whatever you do, don't let that belief stop with this book. Bring it with you everywhere you go, because you know the same thing I do. Everyone is equal. Yeah. So part of that, so part of that message includes making sure that not only can, is everyone given the same opportunities, but everyone can actually take advantage of those opportunities. Because even though officially someone might be able to take an offer up that you know everyone can go to college theoretically but there's things that make it harder for certain people and so we have to make it so that those challenges can be overcome by the people who don't have the same advantages so that's kind of rolled up in that equal access is the main thing we all have to be able to access that stuff and one of the things that has been bothering me lately as a mother of boys is the phrase, boys will be boys. 
because it excuses behavior that boys exhibit, but it's actually behavior that girls and boys exhibit. It's just that boys can get away with it and girls can't. And that creates certain, it allows boys to get away with stuff, which A, isn't really a good thing. And it makes boys feel like they're more entitled to behaving however they want. And that's really not helpful. So it, it takes a lot of kind of catching yourself in those type of things. But I suspect that most people, people listening probably already know that. So I'm going to go ahead and call it here. And thank you for coming by. Have a good one.